in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I really want to encourage you to pay attention to all the teachings. Every koinonia service for you should be a moment of lifting, a moment of rising. We have covenanted with God to not waste the time of anyone at all, whoever finds his way to this place. This is not a museum. This is not a, a film, a cinema center. This is a place for encounter. So when you come, you must have that expectation that God will truly change you. doesn't matter which of the services. It's my personal commitment to God and to you to make sure that every single service becomes worthwhile. Many people, you know, you really have to understand the sacrifices that people go through. And then you will know that it is only godly to ensure that people really encounter God for real. Are we together? Acts chapter 20. I will continue to draw this scripture. And um, let's start with this tonight. What I have to teach tonight is very powerful. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Can you read? If you can see it, please read. One to read. And now, brethren, uh huh. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. You can be among those who are sanctified but not built and without any evidence of your inheritance. The Bible says that a man can be commended first to God and then to the word in this case, he calls it the word of his grace. The word of his grace being the word that is able to provide and make manifest in your life all the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. The Bible says the word of his grace can achieve two things in your life. The word of his grace that is able to, number one, build you up. Everybody say build you up. And then number two, to deliver to you. Now notice how the word of God, I really want you to understand this scripture. Notice how the word of God works. It does not start by giving you an inheritance. It starts by working on you. So that when you sustain that capacity, then there is nothing God is unable to give you. <laughs> Many times we desire things, physically and spiritually, that we do not have the spiritual psychological and physical stamina to receive are we together now yes this this podium is resting on a casted ground it has the ability to take the weight of this so there's no trouble your seat was designed with your weight in mind are we together now so your sitting on that seat is not a threat at all it is able to take you but you cannot carry this speaker for instance and drop it on certain seats it will break so the bible says that the word of god scans your life and looks at the magnitude of spiritual inheritance to be given to you and then it starts by building you until you rise to that level in the spirit where no weight of spiritual substance on you can break you then it delivers to you are we together now so this is already a word of encouragement so that if nothing is being delivered to you as it were you are not discouraged because you know that it means capacity is being built 
are we together many times services like this are not just times of receiving things it may be times of building it is not always that something is just given like you receive something a substance many of us just want something we can receive and run with if it is god he gives gifts according to his riches there is nothing god gives a man that is small and so when god delays in giving you it is because he's allowing your capacity to be able to retain are we together yes very powerful it is not enough to receive you must sustain an ability to retain because you can lose something that God gives you the Bible is full of things that were once given to men and taken back so God is able to take advantage of his word to build me and build you and then when we gain that stature in the spirit then deliver to us an inheritance among them that are sanctified let your word come and bless us oh God in the name of Jesus let me encourage you again I say this to you from the depth of my heart and I say this to you in all truthfulness and I say this to you with all audacity if you listen to the truths that I teach you you will never fail it's true leave your situation and the pride around it don't mind it focus on the truth you are listening to and see how forcible right words are the bible says how forcible there is a force that right words when you receive it can exert on your situation until it bends and glorifies the lord so tonight please take your eyes away from what you are trusting god to do or what has not been done just focus on the word the worst spirit in my opinion demonic spirit now is not death death is just the last enemy not the worst the worst spirit is not the spirit of infirmity that causes sicknesses now the worst spirit listen carefully is not even demonic attack dreaming of somebody chasing you up and down the worst spirit is the spirit that can cause blindness in your understanding the bible says it is able to make even the word of god unfruitful that the god of this world has an assignment to create a system of blindness over the minds of the people so that they are not open to the glorious gospel it is the worst state a man can be in not sickness not failure not poverty none of these things in themselves destroy it is our attitude around them that empowers them to destroy us but blindness whether you do something about it or not it will destroy you blindness every time jesus saw blind people he was very he was intentional about their healing blind people are mad people these two categories anything that affects your eyes and your mind is truly demonic are we together there are people doing exploits in the world today without hands there are people doing exploits today without the ability to speak there are people who do not have limbs and are doing all sorts of things but you will seldom find a madman do anything that is impactful there are people who can even you know just rise above the limitations of blindness but you look at their lives and you know that it is not easy when god opens your eyes and opens your mind is a true miracle are we together now i was sharing i can't remember where now um, i think it was one of the departments i do not know that i was having a meeting with them and then i was sharing with them how that a man is not truly delivered until he receives grace that gives him passion for the word any man that rejects the word is oppressed even if he does not see any spirit in his life 
you don't have to have a dream of a demon chasing you the moment there is a resentment for the wisdom of the word it is it a sign that your life is acutely under an attack are we together blessed be the name of the lord and so as the word of god comes please i i challenge you to open up your heart see it as the word of his grace that is coming to you regardless of what the limitations are pay attention to the word they looked unto him and they were not ashamed their faces were lightened looking at your situation will not change anything but if you look to the word the word has a force that the anointing follows the word not a man the anointing looks like it is following a man because that man is following the word are we together now the anointing does not follow men the anointing follows the word blessed be the name of the lord be fruitful write it down that's our topic for tonight be fruitful if i were you i would say amen, amen. Mm. open our eyes in the name of jesus let the word of god change us genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 we're reading to 28 the lord declared this year by his spirit that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and my assignment is to guide us by the spirit on the principles allocated um, for our fruitfulness our productivity and our efficiency in the kingdom and tonight we're dealing with something very very important genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and elohim said let us make man so man is the subject here after our in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and god blessed them the bible didn't say and god discussed or he said to them please listen and god blessed them and said unto them some other version say and god blessed them saying so he routed the blessing through words but the blessing are not words the vehicle for communicating them is just a word he can choose to use any other mechanism remember he's god and god blessed them and said to them first instruction be fruitful and multiply not or multiply be fruitful that means fruitfulness is not the same as multiplication are we together when the bible says something or something it means either of the two holds the same value but now he's saying be fruitful then in addition to fruitfulness multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it then it says have dominion etc etc so tonight we are picking one be fruitful and we want the lord to open our eyes and to understand god's idea of fruitfulness colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 praise the lord colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god being fruitful not in some in every good work hallelujah so we see from scripture that fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command in fact jesus demonstrated in his own earth work how much he resented on fruitfulness once upon a time the bible tells us that jesus was on his way back and he saw a fig tree and that the tree had green leaves in other words it was attracting his attention 
but coming to the tree he discovered that there were no figs and jesus not a prophet that is still being renewed not an apostle in the making jesus himself looked at the tree and cursed the tree and said that no fruit will come out of you again and by the next day they came and discovered that it had withered right from the root so god is passionate about fruitfulness are we together please write this down to be fruitful means to increase to increase to be fruitful means to be productive fruitfulness entails increase fruitfulness entails productivity fruitfulness entails enlargement and expansion are we together fruitfulness entails evidence evidence you are fruitful to the degree to which your life can produce evidence what evidence evidence of the faithfulness of god evidence of the investment of god upon your life evidence of the supremacy of the word in your life why do we need to be fruitful it's important we know let me just address that because we have a lot to deal with why do i need to be fruitful because you know there are christian circles today well-meaning that think subjects like this should not be the believers should not be bothered with the subject of fruitfulness why because most times when we talk of fruitfulness all they think about is money and physical things they just look at fruitfulness um, in terms of affluence physical and material blessings and then they convince themselves that anyone can live without them and then they assume that all those things are distracting but the bible says we need to be fruitful in every good work every good work every good work are we together why do we need to be fruitful john chapter 15 and verse 8 we'll still make reference to that scripture but please go with me very quickly to john 15. i pray that god opens your eyes to understand this once and for all mm. verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit how is the father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit when a man pays the school fees of his son and the son returns back with a report card and says daddy out of 90 students i took number one and my average is 91 i am doing well that child is fruitful that child justifies the investment of the school fees are we together but on the flip side if the child returns back with a report card and is written there need to see the parent and zero from top to bottom is that child fruitful no the the father is angry for many reasons one he's angry because he's the father are we together just being the father alone is enough to upset him the owner of this child that is carrying this shape are we together two because his resources a symbol of his energy was committed into that boy's life so the bible says the father is glorified when we justify his giving us the holy spirit when we justify his giving us his wisdom his favor remember our scripture here that has become an anthem when god makes all grace to abound towards you he expects fruitfulness in other words he in his mind he does not see that there should be an excuse in your life because all grace has been well coordinated towards you if you're with me say amen, amen. the father is glorified when the saints bear fruit all kinds of fruits number two bearing fruit also inspire and encourage you most people do not know that when they bear fruit their, their own spiritual lives also continue to grow spiritual barrenness is very dangerous and barrenness in every regard is dangerous 
biologically speaking when people experience any kind of barrenness it's not something that is received with gladness it's something that challenges them can even destroy their marriage so we know for sure that any form of barrenness calls for action are we together now yes hearing is my father glorified but then god gives you consolations that my life is producing fruits producing fruits producing fruits the third reason why we need to bear fruits is because our fruitfulness is a message to the world that god is true our fruitfulness is a witness that can cause men to believe in god very important john chapter one please and verse six john chapter one john chapter one and verse six our fruitfulness there was a man sent from god the bible says whose name was john seven the bible says he the same came for a witness what was his assignment to bear witness of the light that through his witness all men might believe so when you are fruitful through your witness men might believe god is depending on men to believe in him but their faith is routed through your results are we together now that means that there is a dimension of my result and your result that has the capability has the ability to make men believe god if it is true that we are passionate about seeing his glory revealed then we must truly desire to be fruitful to the end that men look at our lives the last verse galatians 1 yes 24 and they glorified god in me galatians 1 24 and they glorified god not just through me in me and they glorified god not they glorified me and they glorified god in me are we together gentiles need to see the light the results the evidences of god's hand upon our lives let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters results are a language it is true when you bear fruit even fruit that abides it is a language that speaks to creation about the faithfulness of god it is a language that attracts creation to the one true god the source of all lifting so god is passionate about our bearing fruit mighty god settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness when i am fruitful when i am productive when my life begins to produce evidences that god is glorified let me tell you something about fruitfulness you can say the same thing without fruit and say the same thing with fruit and the impact will be east and west fruitfulness makes your words heavy when you have results your words are worth believing the words of a fruitful man are seldom contended with when people speak from a standpoint of results there is a compelling conviction that it brings to you and so if we want creation to subscribe to this life that we so propose day and night telling them jesus is the way the truth and the life telling them that he is the one who can lift men god is counting on our lives to be able to produce that message and in the name of jesus he will find he will find a real witness in you yeah. be fruitful is a command in the loins of prophecy when god was looking at adam and prophesying he saw joshua selman he saw koinonia and he said be fruitful in other words i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness in your life be fruitful But like every other mystery in the kingdom there are there are we are mandated to understand 
the spiritual systems like i've always taught you uh, that our results depend upon i've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation there are spiritual systems that connect them are we together i've told you the prophetic speakings of god that when god speaks he does not speak as though he's talking to a man he speaks as if he's talking to himself and so some factors will not be captured in his speakings it will take the spirit of revelation to break what god has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word god can look at you and say where is the house and you are sitting down wondering and say god who are you talking to and then he says i'm talking to myself you see that it is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that god does not speak like men knowing how god speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of god are you with me tonight yes so there are mysteries secrets principles you can call them allocated for fruitfulness wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time it may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation according to proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says desire through desire a man having separated himself it says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom but that in itself does not make you fruitful there is a lot of superstition in the body of christ ask the average christian do you believe in results fruitfulness productivity he or she will say yes and then you ask them how is it going to happen then you will hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words but the bottom line is i don't know some will say jesus would do it and it looks very right just because the name of jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others would say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it's not subject to the ideas of men it's something that comes from god if you get this you will be restful your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come lord what are the keys towards my fruitfulness and you remain there waiting like a waiter and the spirit of revelation comes and when it comes upon you the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come 
is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God, open our eyes and help us see. Wherever we stop tonight, we'll pray. Luke chapter 8. We're reading the first 15 verses. Look at this. We call it the parable of the sower. It's not the parable of the sower. It's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation. Just because you read this does not mean you will have an understanding. Now, you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening. You can even write a book about it. But my brothers and my sisters, this is sealed. Until it is open, you will never see what is there. Are we ready now? So let's read. It came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, Jesus now, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, all of that, together they went with him. Verse 3. Um, okay, so, you know, the Bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this. I think it starts from verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake, but he spake by a parable. He communicated, but he used a parable to hide the secret. What is the parable? Verse 5. A sower. A sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until he got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit and hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the Bible says he cried, in many regards, he really cried. It's not just that he lifted his voice loud. He really cried. Why did he cry? He that had ears to hear, let him hear. How can you finish talking to people, my brothers and my sisters? This is Jesus, adult Jesus, not the child learning something in the temple. 
and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching It was not just something that happened one day alone. He was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking. He being the sower. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Let's go back to verse 5 now. There are certain informations that we really, really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness I, I just thought to explain this parable notice that jesus was so passionate about this parable he didn't allow any human being interrupt the interpretation he said i will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion i will explain and in many times jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of god this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreted now and I said, leave that matter. The reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message. But unto you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Every time the Bible uses hearing twice, the second hearing is understanding. Are we together now? Next verse. Now, the parable is this i love jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the word of god mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the word of god number two those by the wayside are they so those soils are people listen carefully people who have hearts the wayside are people the rocks all of that they they are different states of people's hearts notice the goal is to produce result but everything is happening inside a man's heart it just uses a farm to explain the entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The set, the first set just heard, but the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfill the spiritual law here with joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard. The second set heard, received, added joy. The third set heard and took action. Are you seeing now? 
all an improvement to themselves and were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit for jesus is teaching on fruitfulness now let me tell you this kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish they were designed that way so that you have to be like a child to understand their operations and that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication are we together now look at this i am very grateful to god that the sower himself was not mentioned the bible never told us who the sower was so the sower could be anybody the bible tells us what the seed was and the soils the reaction how they were planted and the results are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this very carefully do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance because whoever this sower was it is true that he had to survive a lot when you plant a seed and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continued to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to Jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moment the word of God comes to bless them, they, they, they are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding. But quite honestly, they do not mind. Whether the information is lost or not, it has not become precious and valuable. They have not seen the usability of that information. And so the press to guard and to protect is not there. Are we together? You only protect what you have value for. If you do not have value for it, you may not protect it. When you finish eating your biscuit in a in a, um, the the uh, what they call it now, the the sachet or so, you throw that thing inside a dustbin. Why? Because it doesn't mean anything for you again. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, forget about true success and fruitfulness if. The word of God and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you. You have to get to a point where you have a desperation, a hunger and a thirst for truth. Remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of John, according to the prosperity of our souls. And the Bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul, the renewal, the transformation of your mind. 
Are we together? Let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. So God's ability here is not in doubt. The Bible says he is able to do. To be able means to be capable. To be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction. The Bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's hold it there. Ask or think. I've explained it here. When you say ask or think, that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit. That both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to God. Your asking can be saying, God, bless me. And your thinking, say, God, I just changed my mind. Don't waste your time again. And that both of them are prayers that can rise to God. The Bible says God is able to do what we ask or do what we think. The thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was. It, it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in africa is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt around the north we need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding otherwise we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of god to manifest ask someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising the next thing they begin to tell you all kinds of stories they tell you get a good job they tell you do a good business others will tell you find a good relationship you know somebody who is a destiny helper etc etc those things only matter when these foundational things are in place listen my brothers and my sisters the beginning of your success is when the word of god arrives in your heart and in your mind not when you get a job the starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever your heart and your mind write it down please your heart and your mind a major part of your fruitfulness happens there the manifestation the manifestation is something that can happen suddenly Man of God, listen to me. Businessman, listen to me. Career person, listen to me. The external factor plays a very, very, very small role in your overall success. You are a reflection of the prevailing power of the world within you. You are a reflection of the, the maturity of the word of God in your heart and in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the word of god alters your perceptions the principles of the word of god have gained entrance into your mind i'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be barren while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know. No matter what it is, please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. If it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind, it's not yet your own. We possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it. 
our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of god that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness until that happens in your mind and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of god is an incorruptible seed listen please my brothers and my sisters get this the word of god is an incorruptible seed the mindset it says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 let this mind be in you and verse 5 let this thinking let this perception be in you which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god I show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit When you drink water, your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops. But the water does not stop in your mouth. It gets into your system. If you leave water just in your mouth, it will not do much. You need to swallow it. When you swallow it, go to bed. Every other thing starts automatically. The moment it leaves your mouth, leave the rest. A system has already been designed. You don't just say, water now, where are you? Okay, you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it will damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal I, I need capital i need this i need that no the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference 
it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter one please give it to us and verse eight joshua chapter one moses is let's let's even start from verse five give us verse five we'll read down to verse eight there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give him a new knife and say this i sharpened this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory be strong in the lord and in the power of his might we win not just by physical fights when our spirits and our minds agree let every devil clear the way it's true be strong and of good courage for unto these people thou shalt divide he didn't say you would die during war I thought Joshua would say, come, oh God, assure me, these people have real knife. Will I die or I will live? Already, if God tells you you are going to share a land, it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die. God is saying, look, I've seen the end of it. Let me teach you how to share the land. Look, look at victors. Look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land, not fighting. We're talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. You say, you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I will. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not, the instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only god that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility 
and thou shalt have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level God has empowered people listen God has empowered people in business in ministry spiritual life whatever area God has listen God has allowed us to see the scars of people his his the Bible is not just full of triumphs it's also full of failure and scars the Bible says that all scripture were written for our learning that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so God allows the 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 the, 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 the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn be fruitful is a command be fruitful oh thou sower be fruitful and you're saying god change my life change my life and you're thinking in your mind capital oh god capital just give me five hundred thousand, and god you can't even go out of my life and the devil is saying i like this kind of prayer i like anything that takes the word of god out of a man's life he will leave the capital with you and take the word away and you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life If I talk to many of us now, I say, what are you trusting God for? In what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. And I believe in success. We teach you all the dimensions of success. But let me tell you, just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of God is Scientology. You are just joking and nothing will happen. It is the word of God that empowers as many as believe him. He gave them power to become. Jesus said, follow me, follow the word and I will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing to understand it is another thing to apply it is another thing the labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally please listen to me the dynamics of redemption happen in the grave after the third day when everything had finished the grave hades the place of the dead Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. If a major part of your life is visible for all to see, in this kingdom, people are only allowed to see a minute part in fact it is even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc
be fruitful. As, as God has helped me to rise and grow, I found myself, I'm, I'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise. Because I look at people and I can understand the heart and the burden of Jesus. That he says he looks at people as though a sheep without a shepherd. And I look, I say, oh, I now see why Africa is this way. I now see why our lives are this way. And do you know, many of us believe that because we have sincerity, life must answer to us. Sincerity is very important like we learned, but it is not enough. Something about your understanding has empowered Satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life. Something about your understanding, please listen, understanding is important. When they employ you, Sam, come, it's looking sharp and smart. Look at this. When, when you employ Sam, you are not employing your body. There are few employments where they border on size. Are we together now? Any size in many jobs can do. What they are employing, they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding. A job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So the factor is your understanding. I've given this analogy. Come. Come stand here for me, please. Look at this. Reason with me for one moment. Let's assume that this brother, God forbid, eh? I always give this example. Let's call this guy an arm robber. That is a thief. Are we together? And let's call this one a pastor, a man of God looking sharp. And then... You are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society. And you are praying that God will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing. Now, shoot both of them. Now, it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor, but just in my example, shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead. Who really died? The dead body is on the ground now. Are you going to call the dead body a pastor? Is the dead body a pastor? No. Is the arm robber, is the dead body an arm robber? Neither the dead body, nor the, past, the pastor's body, nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor. The pastor has gone. The arm robber too has gone. Their bodies are there. So who is really the pastor? Talk to me. Who is really the pastor? This body? If Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind. When the mind sits on the throne, then the body becomes a slave to the mind. The body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened. The board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit. The body is not invited. The body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon. Same thing with the pastor. When the Holy Ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now, he's not concerned about the body. He's concerned about your spirit. Then he's concerned about your mindset. Hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect. What has happened within you? This, my brothers and my sisters, is how we are fruitful in this kingdom. Every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation. Say be fruitful. Be fruitful does not mean go and do business. That comes later. Be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital. Be fruitful does not mean go and do all. No, no. The heart preparation and your mind. Most believers have done well in the area of the heart, the spirit. 
but our minds are terribly unfruitful our minds continue to reject the spoken word of God concerning our lives and this is my assignment that if this year if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness then we have to trust God to begin to transit us listen carefully to transit us from different levels of understanding there is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what God wants to give you a man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding that someone has allowed the holy spirit to construct his value system to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show while he's activating these things every member that comes to him is in his house but something from within you calls them and it's not just anointing the health of your mind is a force too it can call the same way it can drive. Please listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. If you intend to be fruitful, except it's just a cliche. You know, and, and, and many times in Africa, I think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders. Not because they are such a big deal alone. We like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results. Just prophesy. Apostle, why waste your time to teach this? Didn't God anoint you for me? I mean, just get bottles of oil here, touch my head, and just like that other person testified. That you bear fruits that abide. While, while I was sitting down here, we just had a brief, maybe 10 seconds discussion with Ejimi, and he said, he shared a scripture that just blessed me. And he said, the Bible says, strong men retain wealth. Powerful. You are not strong just because you have it. The ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you are we together when you lift um, this weight you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win you must hold it for some time it's proof that it's, it did just happen you hold it there while you are shaking and then at a point they say you have the point has been proven that this one you qualify to lift that weight so there are things that when you hold, if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed, it will slip away. But holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge. We don't hold things with our hands. Our hands only support what our mind has held. The real instrument for holding things is your mind. When it's too heavy for your mind, your hand can support. But you don't hold things with your hand. Is God speaking to us? You are seated here right now looking at me, swimming through a maze of challenges maybe, and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation. Could be in ministry, could be in business, could be in whatever it is. But then the Lord is saying, I am limited by your understanding. There is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you. And let me tell you this. You see why Jesus wept. Any man of God who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is. It is difficult to get members to receive. That's why we take out time and pray. Not necessarily because what we are saying saying it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it are we together when revelation comes the truth is there but praying that when the seed is planted that the minds of the people can receive let me tell you less than 10 percent of members really follow and grow on the informations they are given that's why testimonies are scarce that's why there are supernatural instant testimonies but not sustainable ones you will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months he usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge prophetic intervention one miracle here i fell under the anointing and the next day this happened so i get a job by a prophetic word but i never get promoted 
you see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we were discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that i've said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but i tell you don't fight with the spirit sit down and let him take that thing let him edit your understanding and plant the word of god and my brother and my sister you will watch your life rise to reflect what god is putting within you this is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes just to call it no sir to wear it's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it the prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessels to just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke this is scientology and you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this let me tell you by the grace of god god has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry from any dimension you look at it where vast people who are keen on knowledge so we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance whether from business from ministry from whatever we are we are by the grace of god enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance i can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of god and his systems accurately work are we together Be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically. Be fruitful leads you through a process. And the first of the processes is to allow the word of God to find expression in your spirit. Then to find expression in your mind. The moment your mind begins to transit, start rejoicing. With no idea, yes sir, start rejoicing. Because inevitably, the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in 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 circles of what you will think are coincidences but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law i was sharing with the leaders and i said every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up Be fruitful. He's not just speaking to your body. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. This is what will put money in your pocket. Be fruitful. It is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful. It is not the business, the investment, or the job. The job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you. Nobody prospers from business nobody prospers from investment nobody prospers from jobs you prosper off your understanding all of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room that's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings and all those vehicles will produce at different rates even in the good soil it produced 30 fold 60 fold hundredfold the same way we have several people here in koinonia many of you are members workers and leaders but your results are produced at different rates same anointing same mentorship same programs same teaching different results all producing are we together 
if you want to be fruitful your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes thank god for that i say this because you see young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now they look at you and say since when did you graduate you say five years say, you are still dressing like this and the next thing god blesses you with thirty thousand. off you go to somewhere in anger i must buy stretch jeans thirty thousand. i must buy this and that and you shop it you 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 shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say look this is to announce to you i have now improved we say why you say because i have a bigger house because i have a bigger car because i have a bigger this i have that to me that that is increased no sir and your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time you only bought something for someone else i look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind that's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it every other thing can carry the way because it only came around your life but not in your mind the wealth must be gotten here before it comes here are we together yes apostle now if somebody gives me money to start a business can't i just start and prosper you will fail it's not an insult you will fail 99 percent of the people who want to start business will fail not because there are statistics of failure your mind you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper anybody who wants to prosper your first assignment is to look for references and models transformation is easy when there are references not activity not action no listen when there is no reference your your mind operates with imagery and the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into you are not going there hmm. who is god speaking to that this thing you are doing you are just dreaming until there is a reference that's why by the grace of god we continue to walk with the holy spirit that he continues to lift us to make us better references listen let me tell you this if you sit under an apostolic ministry walking in signs and wonders you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference your spirit can easily pick are we together if your pastor is a poor man by the grace of God, you will grow in the word. But it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed. Our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice, a proof of mastery. As you grow, notice you grow in the secret, but you see your result on the members. You stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions, but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry, you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come, you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith, is that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property. And sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You would think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says, now you have the capacity. There are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me 
it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, 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 meditate. Value for the word of God. Listen, let me tell you, I, I look at people in this ministry and I am blessed the way God is lifting people in this ministry. Sometimes I, I, I know how I met them and I know how they came and see the power of the word of God transiting people. The word of God is not a charm. The word of God is a compendium of the principles of God. The understanding of the systems of God and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life. Listen, a day will come you will sit down and say, God stop giving me money. As far as my personal needs are concerned, I don't know what to do and God says it's an irreversible process. It will keep coming. So God will say divert anyone to the kingdom but to stop it, it can't happen again. Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah! You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters. If this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too, you want to rise. You are also joining them. You are coming to that, that stupid place where there are, you people are just jumping for nothing. And you feel stupid. And sometimes in that stupidity, you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter. When they enter your mind, you are gone. Set a guard over my mind. It was a prayer. Set a guard. Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you. One song that you will raise. 
people and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song and he says who sang this song come to my church he will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day you you rise like a spring up and never go down again the systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place it is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourselves, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say you have been in this Zaria for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 and your empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie and you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, brothers and sisters, don't be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear, you are truly poor. Follow me when I finish those words. I told you be fruitful. We are just starting. Then there is multiply. Then there is replenish. Then there is subdue. They are not the same. Never be poor such that all you have is just money. If all you have is money, you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do. Most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since, not because they understand it. You say this in an average church and people say, yes, it's true. It's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get. But it is true. God is giving you what is better than money. You know this issue of saying this person is worth this, worth that. Oh, Pastor Alpha, you are worth 10 million. What, what nonsense. What do you mean I'm worth 10 million? No. What do you mean you are worth 100 million, 1 billion? Those are just carnal expressions. Sensual manifestations. And it's not just say, oh, I'm worth the blood of Jesus. It's true too. But you can be worth something solid that is greater than money. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life, only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life, only children need you. There are things when you have in life, only young people need you. There are things in life when you have, only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. The, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Please sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you. I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we're doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no 
listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house that equation is for some people I'm exempting you from that list are you getting what I'm saying listen to me oh borrow money from the bank and build a house then repay over 30 years no there is a dimension that when you have my brothers and my sisters an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say can I give you the privilege I've taught you something look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of God will come to the city and they will carry 10 times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14 you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind ah oh, no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations i had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of God who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to France right now that the president of France they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like France calling for you to sit down this is what God is training you to become. The level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say, I am first. That's mediocrity. That is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house. That's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go. I testify, testify that your goodness is real. I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen. The work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs. It will surprise you and because you will not be a man of God as it were. You know, most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of God. It's not true. These are the systems of the kingdom. You've heard me say that we will all be great. 
and that we will all know ourselves keep watching keep watching what our children will be keep watching most times people don't believe truth until it's too late there are people today who look and say i used to know this man it's not used to know god is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of god can limit where it is going it is by the spirit listen this tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point throw it out of the window you have left that realm since hear what i'm telling you you have left that realm since pressure to prove a point oh apostle I'm, my desire now is to trust god let me just get a four bedroom flat and god says but you got a four bedroom flat right when koinonia started it is just coming through the loins of time to manifest who through faith subdued kingdoms there are some of you let me tell you when you're you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the fastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five bedroom flat and God will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of God sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting was saying, oh god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister <clears throat> be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small are you getting what i'm saying that one person here one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an idp camp one person without making noise this is what god is raising you to become and you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that you are just somebody who loves god Hi. be patient be patient i cause the spirit of hurry be patient be patient watch what our children in koinonia become when they are five ten you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the word themselves there are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it and god says sit down there just sit down because i'm not giving you a church i'm giving you territories territories not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say i am better no sir no sir i testify testify that your goodness is real I testify, testify that your goodness is real. Hey, your goodness is real. I testify. that you think God did not answer he's answered it since it's just that you didn't know how the answer comes he answered it since some of you God looked at your prayer request and all he saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote you are bigger than it already and God did not see a need God is saying you've not given me a prayer request 
you wrote nonsense there lord if i can just have thirty thousand every month and lord if i can and god just looks at it and says the level of the word that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return i say god but i'm a village boy i'm a village girl and god says leave all of that one and stay with me listen beware of the pride of unbelievers respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge but there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them doing making all kinds of noise they will rubbish you and make you look small i sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small to make them look like we have waited so long is it that god cannot give you a shoe what is in a shoe that god cannot give you what is in a cloth you mean you are still using a, a second hand with one ah, but you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid and god says my daughter forget about this are you ready to pray be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am fruitful. Gentiles to my light. Gentiles to my light. Are you praying, Koinonia? Be fruitful. Be productive. God is altering your thoughts, altering your understanding. We win by the health of our spirit man and the health of our understanding god is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results i assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed where are the invitations to travel around if you are really anointed who is placing a demand on your grace they will say but forget about them and stay with the god of all flesh let him walk upon your spirit let him walk upon your mind allow that pregnancy that is in your mind allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce your goodness is real testify your goodness is real your goodness is real Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience. Listen. God is a God of speed. But God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up. Everybody say built up. Be careful with unhealthy comparison. Business people listen. Career people listen. Listen. 
we were all classmates now this one is like this this one has two houses and i am here nothing is moving be careful if you see that in your life know it's an attack listen listen especially for our dear sisters listen to me my adorable ladies let me tell you this you listen to what this arrogant world without christ is telling you you will not amount to anything they will make you feel stupid for loving god they will make you feel stupid for staying and growing you will look so cheap and weak but you stay and let god adorn you like hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day one day what is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared don't be ashamed of where you are you are still fruitful don't be under pressure listen listen let me tell you this if you can conquer the pressure of proving a point you have conquered life the pressure of proving a point I need to prove to the people in my family I need to prove to the people in my village they've been saying what are you doing in Zaria for five years eh? are you cost that your life is not rising hold on when God is done with you ah. my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by Let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray some time back i was to inv be invited somewhere one of the places that i went to minister and a man of god was called and asked and said do you know apostle joshua selman and he said well i've heard about him but i don't know him and the man at the other side of the phone advised the the people to invite me and said Can't, we don't know this man don't invite him rather invite a b c d and the person at the phone say you don't know the encounters i've had with this man it's impossible for us no matter what you say we must invite him that's what happens when you wait for god there are men that continue to pray secretly why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy but my brothers and my sisters when god puts something in your spirit and put something in your mind you have watched people waste their time forever they will waste their time forever it is the finger of god that lifts you and keeps you they will finish a meeting and say don't promote pastor alpha sit down here he will never rise just when they finish the man goes back and by the next day the promotion letter is out listen there are not too many people like us on earth it's important for you to understand this it's not pride it's a breed that is plucked out of fire your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. so wish and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but he seek ye first the kingdom of god and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate 
not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection I commend you first to God and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will say that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray shamakato shatia embrekato sakato raskima hashalakato the anointing is growing in my spirit I'm full of the power of God full of the Holy Ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but I trust in the name of the Lord I may not have relatives to back me I may not have a wealthy family to support me but I have received God and the word of his grace that is able, 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 able to lift me outside I will pray why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. 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 Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Carry that mentality. Every time the word of God says be fruitful, the devil takes you to your ATM and says how much is there. Every time the word says be fruitful, he says so why are you thinking of paying rent? You are even trusting God to raise the money for the rent. Does that look like fruitfulness? Let me tell you the devil is a liar. He's a master of the sense realm. And if you dwell there, he will say where are the members? You have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful. Are you ready to prophesy to yourself? Spirit, soul, and body, I am fruitful. Decree and declare. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Nations will come out of you. And kings out of your loins. Businessman prophesy. Yes, sir, with no evidence, I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Man of God, are you praying? I'm fruitful. The anointing is at work in my life. Nobody can reject the investment of the Holy Ghost upon my life. It may take time, but I'm rising in the name of Jesus Christ. My family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life. Everybody around me may doubt the finger of God. I may even doubt it myself. But I heed to the command. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In spite of your failures, I am fruitful. Declare fruitful. Hallelujah. That's my mindset. Fruitful. 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 Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you. It's true. I'm fruitful. Still fruitful. You may not have money to prepare a meal. But in the name of Jesus, God is doing something. The wealth is not transferred to your account. The wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power.
verse 5 don't forget philippians let this mind let this mindset let this body of understanding be in you listen hold on every great man you know is who he is not because of the wealth and the affluence the wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for when you see money in your pocket that money is a receipt you get receipts only when you have bought things the good shoe is a receipt the good clothes is a receipt the first class flight is a receipt it is not the reason why you are blessed it is the proof that you are already blessed are you getting me now how many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you that's what is happening to many of us you have already bought the things you are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt it will come as a car it will come as open doors it will come as you never having to follow the boss for anything again it will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom but until then be patient for some of you you are you, have, you are standing on that queue just waiting for your turn to come and my brothers and my sisters you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you can i tell you this don't be afraid of results that came through understanding don't be afraid of results that came through understanding most times you see because of the multiple failures like the man who planted when you plant by the wayside when you plant by the rock when you plant upon thorns that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail but you see when that seed begins to grow and becomes a great tree it will not only bless you it will bless the birds it will bless everybody who is passing around that's what god is doing with us are you getting what i'm saying very very important you are receiving something you are receiving the anointing but you are receiving an understanding so don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons you will fail in your life you will fail in your business you will fail in marriage you will fail in um, um financially you will fail spiritually that organization you cannot be able to run an organization you, you cannot be able to run a ministry who told you that do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability they are the stabilizers of destiny and that's what god is doing so we are going to pray lord reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful lift your mind your, your voice and pray reconstruct my understanding reconstruct my understanding lord there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful i acknowledge them are you praying i acknowledge that there are limitations territorial limitations tribal limitations sociological limitations i've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally they may be my family members they may be my relatives they may be my classmates they may be well-meaning people if someone pray lord i give you the allowance to alter my understanding there is something i know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful there is something i know or i do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down there is something i know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace quicken my understanding quicken my understanding quicken my understanding hallelujah I apologize for taking time the holy spirit is giving me a scripture isaiah 11 and verse 2 we're still praying. isaiah 11 and verse 2 can you still have it projected isaiah 11 and verse 2 let's see if we can find it let me turn it here to save time isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 hmm. i'm handing over to you a secret is a secret that make men really great and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of god and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick this is what you have to pray 
a quickened understanding is a real miracle you can have as a student a five point cgpa yet your understanding is unfruitful the fortitude to understand life to know wisdom is understanding you become a priority personality by default your understanding upgrades you like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again you are not trying to stay it has stabilized you at a realm are you ready to pray finally lord quicken my understanding i confess that there are gaps in my knowledge i confess that there are gaps i i am learning already but my foundation is fighting my mindset i am i am still loyal to old ideas i am still loyal to old concepts lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting i cry for mercy and i cry for grace is someone praying I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset when the Holy Spirit renews your mind it's like it's like a welder creating a container and once everything has been welded well then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you and you will find out that you will retain strong men retain wealth not money wealth the wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding you see i teach you and continue to stand with the holy spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation it must be guided are we together the mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds in other sessions i will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two. While men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers. And there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God there are certain liftings if it happens it is only God that can do it it is honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it but what if he takes the pain away what if he takes the situation away what if he takes the predicament away it takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country and to watch what is going on in the times that we live in and act as if nothing is happening to people there are real problems poverty is a real problem young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1 you are roaming around the streets like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. 
and you at least my money cannot rent a house but it can buy a rope what can it buy a rope and the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope and you find a tree and hang yourself and you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died and then people come to church with that kind of pain and the man of God says don't worry it's not all about your needs it's about Jesus I agree it's about Jesus but man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely there has to be an opportunity given when the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people I will never never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it no sir Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families? Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered? I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted. But I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace. Whoever told you favor has stopped working? Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen. A place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change. Do to me what you want. Listen, when the Lord turn again the captivity of your family, when the Lord turn again the captivity of your destiny, he says we were like them that dream. How beautiful is it to see the other side of pain? How beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. 
please listen to me I want to charge your faith before we pray I believe that challenges can end I believe that problems can end did you hear what I said I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God I believe it I believe it I believe prosperity is real I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian I believe in the blessing of the Lord I believe in what it can do to your family I believe in what it can do to your children I believe in what it can do to your health I know poverty causes sickness I know it causes worry nobody will preach into embracing nonsense no I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers I believe in speed I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month I truly believe it I truly believe it I believe God can restore time When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, lift, to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? 
a prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We're talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with. And you turn back and on Sunday, you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly, fire. A new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God. And say, it was never about your hands. It was about your heart. But tonight... I need your hands too, in addition to your heart. Step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist. That tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. Yeah. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say let's pray no that's what the scribes did all the time but Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy and he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes they thought they would share the grace he closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand he said stretch your hands these things I write to you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside pray. 
those following online pray Lord visit me Lord visit me appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh pray over your ministry pray over your business pray over your career pray over your destiny Lord I came that the gates be open tonight Elam shalawa kasala kaparatus Ebra kato sekete kaparianda kapariasha Pray Pray That devil must leave my destiny today that wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah,
Look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the works of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, For the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
and I declare right now at the count of three let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now I release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere I activate the operation of this grace I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for kabakatalika parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel I command speed 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 bring them out speed Keleba, help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus it says ye have encompassed this mountain for too long turn ye not what I prophesy again like 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 fire from heaven let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any families stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. 
I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. My God. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night, but except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Elabarakatos pekeretos. Heliabratos kepereketos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear. I don't know what family and what person came here crying. But the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let an anointing come upon your life now. That terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me. 
except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your role if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of Jesus Madam be free I take it out of your life now the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now I release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of Jesus be free now I'm seeing fire rising from this road just from I don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this room right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. 
right now I stretch my hands now something is coming on people right here be free now 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 keep praying lift your voice overflow one keep praying something is about to change in your life now please you don't have to touch me and i want you to help everybody close to you as i pass the anointing of the spirit is touching everything that needs to leave thank you jesus be free now 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 that anointing is touching you right now be free be free be free be free i take it out of you right now the fire of the holy spirit right here where i'm standing right here where i'm standing the lord is taking something out of your life be free i'm standing here and the lord is saying it is over he's speaking to someone it is over an anointing is coming on you now it is over 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 madam be free now the power of god is touching someone here in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus be free be free be free be free, be free. please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of jesus i declare and declare be free be free be free, be free. every devil of darkness be free. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that is held, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I'm seeing a chain. A chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God. I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me, Overflow two. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach, Sela Kaparato Siketa, Kela and Debraska Lakatosh. Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please let your heart be open please except God is not God whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the spirit the power of God comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of Jesus honor your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus right now be free I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three.
Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Hela paruka to seketelekatekata. From the front to the be free now. In the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now from the front to the back. Upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please everyone, overflow one, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. And declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues. And sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would we'll do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow 3. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three um they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um the second equa area so let that be a single overflow two and then finally overflow three you can walk to the front of your projector stand all of you who desire to be prayed for we believe in the healing power of jesus i believe in miracles and our time is gone you'll be ministered to very fast and then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil if you want to do a thorough walk. You are not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours, but we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online... You can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to... Um, for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here i hope i'm doing the right thing and then overflow two b and two c let me call it now 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please, please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you be back to your seat and check yourself. Whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting, whatever the situation is, whilst they touch and they minister, just expect a miracle. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Within the time we have, we pray that your healing power will flow. Let the sick be healed. Transform our lives. Visit us in a new way. Glorify Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria. Circuit.
are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too? You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we are not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I will, I will see you after the service and just say hi. Since you came, just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand, and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation. This is, this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched. Not everybody can be prophesied to, not everybody may be personally ministered to. But this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please i want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to i want you to believe because this is representing you before god i want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while. You are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord 
I'm seeing fire burn on this thing. I wanted to go down on my knees, but I just saw fire burning. And the Lord said, I should declare and speak over it. I'll declare and speak over it. Um, there is one gentleman and one lady. One gentleman, one lady. The power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today I have seen them they are strong they are fine the Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except God instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names I decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it 
The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted. Lord, let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Yes. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the word of God. I've seen its ability to turn, to change, to transform lives. There was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will. Please, let's not limit God. I say these things to challenge us. These versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful. You have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way. Don't they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way? Hallelujah. What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? Gave him a number, he calls a general in the army and they say, who gave you my number? And he doesn't know who gave him his number. Bottom line, he gets a job as a result. Look, let me tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm praying for you. The dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ A gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything 
he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison I pray for you. Whoever has access to the ears of your helper, may God compel them to speak about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone trusting God for a job. In the name that is above all names, please believe. And by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I declare that between now and August, by the grace and the name of the Lord, return with a miracle job. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray for those in ministry. The fire that must come on a man. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire. And the world will come to watch you born. I decree and declare. May that fire come upon your life. Every dying business in this place. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you. Come back to life now. And to, leave, to deliver those appointed to death. There are people appointed to death. I heard a man of God give a story. Of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus that is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I pray in the name of Jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible. It's an attack. I decree and declare. 
let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points and we're done herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit the grace for results is called the power of performance receive that grace now I speak to you produce results produce results repeated results predictable results in every area of your life be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience. I declare rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me encourage you, listen. Make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you. And be sure to make it a duty to testify. Let it not be a burden. To, you are not, testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed. Testimonies are proof to men, to creation, to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty. Testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others. It's important to not withhold testimony. Someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith. So be sure that as God touches you, you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far, but we're on various social media platforms. You can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God. Praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention let me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. Win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody 
to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. It's something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come from altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and i declare their sins forgiven and i declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them holy spirit i commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. There's someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in concert, please follow her. And um, there will be a group of people to receive you very briefly. And you'll be back. Let's honor them. Koinonia. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain